Oh, t take your time, I have to boot Keynote. Yeah, warm welcome for Ivan. <laughs> G'day. Uh, I apologize in advance uh, if uh, any of you can't understand me. I'm the legitimate Australian, unlike Dr. Nick, but he says he can understand me. So, uh, my name's Ivan, I work at app.io, and we have a lot of servers. And can I ask, who here has had to deploy a server before? Sweet, apart from Dr. Nick. Uh, so tools like Docker are awesome. Uh, tools like uh, Cloud Foundry are awesome. Uh, a lot of them, unfortunately, only work with virtualized servers. Uh, we have a lot of Mac minis. I've actually lost count of how many we have. There's a fair few. And we discovered after about three or four that it's just not practical to SSH in and you know run 100 commands and guarantee that it's all going to be consistent across all of those machines. So a couple of other tools that people would usually use in this space is like Chef or Puppet. But personally, I think that Chef is just a little bit too complicated to be my personal flavor of something that I want to set up. I mean, you've got to install AMQP, you've got Solar, you've got Chef API, Knife, all the other crap that goes with it. So we discovered this thing called Ansible, which is piss easy to get going. You just brew install Ansible, and it gives you the Ansible and Ansible playbook binaries. And I'm going to show you, and I apologize that this is just like code stuck into Keynote. They wouldn't let me put my own laptop in, but I'm not going to complain. So firstly, you create a host file, which you can break up into groups, maybe region-based. We have like... Hong Kong, Sydney, US West, US East, London, uh, Tokyo, and something else in ours. Uh, but here's a smaller example of web and DB. Let's say we've got four servers like this. And just to check that it actually works, just run this command, and it will ping them. Pretty straightforward. And it does this all asynchronously. So if you have 50 servers here, it'll just create 50 threads, which ping them. Pretty cool. Um, but that's not very useful. What is useful? is the playbook feature, which is what you kind of build these recipes of infrastructure which describe your entire stack and you can mix and match different parts. But in a nutshell, it's all YAML. So it's not, you don't have to go learn Ruby or you don't have to go learn Python or whatever else your provisioning tool is written in, Bash. Um, in a nutshell, you just create these YAML files and follow a certain naming convention. Uh, highlighted in green there. So here is an example of a role within one of our playbooks which adds all the team's uh, public keys to all of our servers. So if shit hits the fan and we have to figure out what's going on, they can just SSH in, they have to worry about passwords or anything or whether or not they have access. Everyone just has access to it. And if one of these guys leaves the team, we just remove their name and they get removed from all the boxes. Um, so basically what's happening here is and I, I kind of wanted to click through it, but that's okay. Um, we create a, a folder called Team Authorized, which is the name of our role. Uh, another folder in there called Tasks and Main.yaml, which describes any number of tasks. You can decide how this is all laid out yourself, but in a nutshell, uh, it will run all the tasks in here, describe what it is, say we use SUSO. Uh, we use a module called Authorized Key, which is a module within Ansible. Um, which, in a nutshell, just adds all these public keys to the authorized keys file on that host. And you can tell it which user to use and so forth. Uh, and the with file option here will just read these files and pass them into the dollar sign item key there. Which, uh, it all just kind of works like magic and it's pretty straightforward. Um, then we create a playbook called WebStack in this instance. Uh, specify which hosts, now that can just be all, which is everything you've got in your host file, or you can put a region in there or a group or whatever you want, even just a single host. Um, you can override variables here, like you can put different keys in, specify the user, use a different public key, that's, oh, sorry, use a different private key to authenticate, that sort of thing. Uh, and then you just list all the roles that you want to apply to these servers. So in this case we've got one which is the team authorized one which I created earlier. And 
you can build these up using, I actually don't know how many modules they have now, but there's a fair few. It's got everything from even provisioning instances on EC2, on uh, DigitalOcean, Rackspace, and so forth, uh, right through to creating, removing users, deploying Rails, deploying Postgres, spinning up processes, making sure they're running, sending your logs to log entries, stuff like that. It's, it's all there and you just specify them in task and run it. So ship it. Uh, this is the uh, pre-canned output that I created earlier. Uh, basically running Ansible playbook with our host file and that webstack.yaml file. It will spit out something like this. What it's saying is it's playing over all servers. Uh, the first thing it does is gather facts about those servers, which is kind of like it connects to it. It asks a few questions. What's the host name? How many processes does it have? How much memory? What's running? And it basically exposes these as a whole of variables you can use later on to build more complicated uh, playbooks to do a lot more interesting things than putting somebody's public key on there. Uh, but yeah, then across those two servers, it will copy all of our public keys to the authorized keys file, and we're good to go. Thank you.